welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And no, we are not in a garage. We are in the Lake District, a spectacular part of the Lake District I have never visited before. We stayed last night in Buttermere, a bridge hotel down there. This is Crummock Water here and it's spectacular up here. I've been to the Lake District before, Be we did that story didn't we at Troutback and Windermere and that McLaren SLR. It's very touristy around here. This you have to search out a bit more and it's harder to get to, it's that much further north uh, and it's an area I've always wanted to do. I've got a friend who has a house here and he says you've got to come and stay. So anyway that's what we did last night. Now this video is going to be a road trip in the Jaguar XJC V12 manual. Finally it's working beautifully. We'll come to that in a moment. And the, the idea of this trip is we, we're, this is our starting point, Buttermere, and then today we're going to head up to Stranra and then Ken Ryan. Where is a ferry to Belfast? Because we are going to Ireland, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland in the Jaguar. So I just felt, yeah, it's the Green Isle, the Emerald Isle. This is a green Jaguar, so there's a tenuous link there. That's the reason for going. And I hadn't done a road trip in a while. And this car was just begging to be taken on a road trip. But yesterday we set off from home, uh, packed up and there were thunderstorms forecast. We've had a very hot spell in the UK and it was all breaking down into thunderstorms as it does. And coming up the motorway, I, we, I knew it was a 500 and a bit hour slog and there were these thunderstorms forecast, but we seem to be just ahead of them. So we're going to be okay. We stopped off at T-Bay Services because I could, there was a monster great thunderstorm just starting. Um, if you know T-Bay Services, it's well worth stopping at. It, they're like motorway services like no other. It's like a very lovely farm shop, all sorts of glorious food on shop. There's even a butcher. I think they do their own beer as well. So yeah, stop there and then set off again, hoping we'd miss the thunderstorms. We hadn't missed the thunderstorms and yeah, we really got stuck in them. And first thing that happened, is the passenger side wiper dropped off which is not good but when it dropped off it just sort of sat on the bonnet so we managed to actually get it in the car without stopping on the motorway and i was left with one wiper and then that one wiper sort of changed position on the screen and it wasn't looking good you do not want to be on a thunderstorm on a motorway everything around you and no wipers Fortunately, I'd, I'd use some Rain-X on the screen and that sort of helped, but we pulled off at Penrith. Um, I filled it up with fuel because I was also intrigued how many, what MPG this car could do because I've never actually, actually measured it since all the rebuilds. The answer is 18.7 MPG, which is still not great, but a damn sight better than the average sort of 13, 14 MPG these get as standard in automatic form. And then, while we stopped for fuel, I tried to mend the wipers, see if they were fixed properly. They weren't, so smothered it in Rain-X and just got to our hotel last night. And um, there's a local farmer here I was introduced to, Les Sykes Farm, fantastic ice cream they make up here. And we got the spanners out and tighten everything up. Tom Lempford gave me a tip that maybe if you tighten it against the scuttle that might make them work again. The trouble with the wipers on a Jaguar of this age they hide underneath the dash. The whole dash has to come out to get access to the actual mechanism. Unfortunately the spanners this morning did not cure it so I have a wonderfully running Jaguar XJ Coupe but I haven't got any wipers. So yeah if you come over here I think my best friend on this trip is going to be Rain-X and we're going to be looking at the forecast more intently than perhaps we do normally. So a little, a little map session so you can see where we are. Here we go, we're right up the top. I'll do a close up of where Buttermere is but basically it's Keswick, it's in this area of the Lake District here. We're going to go now to Cockermouth, Carlisle and Dumfries and where we're heading is um, Ken Ryan there is where the ferries leave and this is just beautiful along here. So we're going a little trick route, route after Dumfries across the uh, moors up here. I think it's the A712 over here, Newton Stewart. And then we're going to nip across Belfast and then um, tomorrow we'll be doing the coast road up here. Giant's Causeway I've always wanted to go to. Northwest um, 200 is up here as well. 
this just glorious countryside. But uh, that's all for tomorrow. First thing we have to do is to get to the ferry, which I think is about half past three this afternoon. And the time now, quarter past 10. of the Lake District now. I mean, first of all we went to Carlisle and then you turn left it's um, A75 towards Dumfries and it was yeah it's quite a busy sort of main road there was if you ever up here there was obviously police activity should we say and you go along there and eventually you see a turning to the A712 which is what I'm on now it's sort of over the top, it's Dumfries and Galloway is the area we're in. I think it's where they actually released the Golden Eagles I saw on a programme recently. And it's it's quite a testing road, A712. It's, it's not a mega road, but it's sort of twists and turns and has all sorts of ability. I've had this just skim the surface twice and this has never bottomed out since having its new exhaust and all the suspension but it has just kissed the tarmac here twice. Yeah and it's not raining which is good so we can actually enjoy it as well. We're about an hour away from the ferry and then yeah off to Northern Ireland but for the moment I'm just going to enjoy this road we just swing around and see what we're looking at. There you go. You could almost be in Wales but we're not we're in Scotland the roads are empty, which is good, but as you can see, it's up and down all the way. Well, morning. We are now in Ireland. We took the ferry last night, and it was an easy crossing across. To, we went to Belfast because we had friends we were meeting up with last night. It's a very distinctive car. I got to follow him to, to his place, the uh, Lancia Fema 832 that I actually featured on the channel uh, a few years ago now, but it was great to see it again in action. It was quite a pair, the V12 Jaguar Coupe versus Fema 832. And this morning we've made our way to Belfast, from Belfast, onto the A2 which is the Causeway Coastal Route, as they term it over here. And we now just started. Where, where I really want to see today is Giant Causeway. The geology at a, up to A level, and the Giant Causeway, I have to say, has always fascinated me, and I've always wanted to see it for real. So that's the first thing on our agenda, but I'm told the road getting to it is going to be fantastic as well. Giant Causeway turns out to be very popular, as you can see from this car park. Uh, National Trust area and 1350 each if you want to do the full experience. I feel I've travelled this far, I've never always wanted to go, so I'm going to do the £13.50 experience and see what it's all about. Just the road over here, that uh, coastal road, what got me was it's coastal to begin with, and it's really spectacular how close you are to the actual sea. It's just there, and you're all hugging it. And then it changes, and you actually go up, and you climb up, and there's a really good section, a wooded section, and then you end up on the moors up on the top, which, from the description, Causeway Coastal Route, that wasn't what I was expecting, but it was a good bit of road. Anyway, I'm off to see the giant causeway, finally.
Well, I can now say I visited Giant's Causeway and I, was, I quite enjoyed it actually. I mean, it's, it's so crowded, it's an absolute tourist mecca, but then it is a UNICEF World Heritage site. Um, so all the coaches, they all head for it. But it is very peculiar and you have direct access to it and you walk about on it and you take lots of photographs and selfies and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool really. Now we've sort of headed back and I'm, we're in Port Rush at the moment. Nice road just coming away, drop down to Port Rush. Port Stewart is next. But this is actually the road we're on. It's still part of the Causeway coastal route, but it's also the route for the Northwest 200. And that is this motorbike race, road racing they do at here. Think of the TT in the Isle of Man. Well, this is also a very famous motorbike racing. And Port Stewart is mecca for the Dunlop family who are just legends in the road racing world that Ireland really uh, sort of dominates. But uh, yeah, we're stuck in a 30 and things at the moment, but the weather's perked up. And I'm gonna fill up with um, some super unleaded when we get to Port Stewart, because the tip off I had is if you ever visit Southern Ireland, you can't get super unleaded. Now I also want to say, we are going to Southern Ireland, even though we're right at the very top of Northern Ireland, because weirdly, Southern Ireland starts sort of on the western coast, right next door to Northern Ireland, and the very northern tip of Ireland is in Southern Ireland. It's a bit Irish that, I know, but that's where we're heading. So we're gonna fill up with fuel, and then we're heading over there is Southern Ireland. And we're gonna take a little ferry across with a bit of luck, and we'll go visit the northern tip of Ireland. little surprise that was 20 euros for one way across here because as soon as this ferry leaves this dock we're in Southern Ireland so and Southern Ireland is in uh, Europe so therefore it's now euros it's just strange trying to get used to how it all works in Northern Ireland but what a day for it Ferry was quite fun, just the two cars on it. So yeah, it wasn't earning a fortune today, but there's a lot more actually coming back. And now we've hit Southern Ireland, it has a different feel to it. As soon as you get off, you notice everything's in kilometres an hour, so the road size of kilometres an hour. I'm looking at yellow chevrons here. Already just has a different feel to it. But the road's big, open, straight. We went across some moors to get here. Uh, it was, yeah, it's looking dip good. It's more, it's more Scotland-like than perhaps Northern Ireland was. very top of Ireland. So this is Malin Head, just there. Stunning view. I have to say, coming up here, this is the sort of wild Ireland I hope to find on this trip. And all the roads up here have just been fantastic. Little thatched cottages just down the bottom of here. Rugged roads, just, yeah, really nice. This is, this is where we are. We're right at the very top, where that little arrow there. Malin Head, as you can probably see there right at the very top and today we've basically come from Belfast gone all the way around here Valley Castle and round and then um, the causeway Giant's Causeway is up the top there and there's that's a sort of bit touristy area and there's the little ferry that we took across to get into and when we crossed the border as soon as we left the um, 
um, the ramp there and then we're in Southern Ireland so that's what we've done now what I'm going to do I think I'm going to end this video now because we've got to get all the way down to Donegal that's where we're staying tonight because the plan is tomorrow do this road right up here which is some of the highest cliffs in Europe I'm told overlooking the Atlantic right on the edge of the Atlantic and then we're going to dive back and do some of the great roads in the middle of Northern Ireland here um, going Cookstown that sort of way Omar and then we're going to head back and we stay tomorrow night Ballygally we're staying tomorrow night and then we ferry out on Thursday but uh, what a beautiful end to today though Jag performing perfectly you know uh, stretching the gears doing a few overtakes that's a good thing there are enough straights every now and then to just get past a daughter or or you know camper van or something but uh, yeah very nice part of the world just here hotel we stayed in last night Mill Park Hotel very busy hotel and uh, yeah now the fun with the keys this is Donegal we're just outside Donegal's over there this is, yeah, I just wanted to stay here because it's a big car park and convenient for where we're heading today and all we're doing today is trying to beat the rain unfortunately we are luck of the super dry sunny day yesterday is not going to continue. Big boot. If you drive, if you drive an XJ from the 70s, you get an enormous boot that has a sort of secondary area right at the back that you can't even reach. So yeah, it's good for luggage, as you'd imagine. Yeah, you get all sorts of keys, engine, uh, boot, and doors is how all that works. But uh, yeah, you'll never run out of space. And to close a boot on this, you lean on it. You can never slam it to actually close it. Like a little bird is wandered across, isn't it? Got a, I've got an app on my phone and I can't recommend it highly enough. It's called Rain Today. If I click on it, there you go. It's live radar of what where the rain is. If I look back here, uh, so 19 minutes before it actually starts, and you can actually see the rain. There it is, and I play it. And that's unfortunately is what we're going to get so a little dose and then a very big heavy dose coming our way <sighs> gutted absolutely gutted with a car with no wipers that's going to test us um rain next to the pool i want to just check engine oil yeah it just doesn't use oil or water or anything there's the oil right at the very top right on full so super clean still Good. Oh, right. Yeah, let's get going and get away before this rain does actually start.
quite a morning. Here's the sea, this is the Atlantic, and this is the sort of tip of it, and yeah, America is over there somewhere. This morning, yeah, we've had some fun. Yeah, there we are, the Killybegs we went to, and then we headed up this bit, the yellow road, the R263, and then the 230 back to Ardara. Which is, and we're just on that little point in the middle with no name and that little tongue sticking out. My goodness, these roads, these were really quite testing. Our two, once they go to yellow, you really don't know the sort of condition of them. And they really gave this a workout, suspension on this a workout. Because they're just undulating and every now and then you grind out and you're really not expecting it. And there's peat bogs up the top. We were up in the moors at one point and you, they seem to hand dig the peat out, see all the bags. But the road just slumps and it's just all over the place. Do not bring your GT3 down here. You need a 911 Dakar to cope with the roads we've just done. Jagger just coped, thank goodness, big fat tyres, reasonable ground clearance, but even that was kissing its exhaust every now and then, completely unexpectedly, just you couldn't spot where it's going to happen. But quite beautiful up there, and the sort of expanse of I expected to see from Ireland, there's quite a fun little set of bends in there as well that we were mucking about on as well. But the other thing I can't get over, we wander down here, is sort of how sandy the beaches are we've just come here and on the left there's this estuary and it's just this yellow sand everywhere not quite as yellow here but yeah quite sandy in amongst the rocks you're not meant to take any rocks from here i presume because they're all these lovely sort of rounded rocks you get but uh yeah this is the wild side of ireland and uh yeah it's, it's really very pretty, I mean very Scottish isn't it? If you go to Scotland it's very similar. Or the Islands of Sky it reminds me of, that sort of feel to it. But what we're going to do now is basically we're going to go back onto the main road, I think it's N56, this red, and then perhaps use this R250 if I'm feeling brave to Letter Kenny and basically then just find some fun roads in Northern Ireland and head as I said before our base tonight, Ballygally. We're back in Northern Ireland now. We've come across the last time we were right on the coast and we've came across this, the Blue Stack Mountains. It's actually the R253 we did. Oh, it's quite testing. It's it's narrow road. It feels like you're on a rally track or something. 
and constantly looking out for the bumps, etc., as you as you pile across, but empty, thank goodness. And it's quite a relief when you finally hit. Well, it's Ballyboffy we got to, and then you're on the N15 and a sort of national route. And from that, we went on to Straban, and now we're in Northern Ireland. Just go over a bridge and you're back in Northern Ireland. It's just weird that you're you're in effectively in Europe and then into the UK without a border anywhere these days. Uh, and then we've headed up to the top. Now, the, these, this area we're in now is um, the Sperrin Mountains. I think mountains is slightly overselling it. Anybody who lived in the Alps would say you call these mountains, but uh, it's moorland, really, over the top. God, they're testing roads. Again, wider here, but constantly. Your suspension gets up a monster workout on these sort of roads. And they go on and on. We're, we're sort of going to the top. There's a choice of roads we could have taken over these um, Spirin Mountains, but uh, yeah, it's the B47 we're taking. It feels like a Lotus Elise type track rather than anything else. If any of your car was sort of track focused, no, don't bring it here. Which is sort of what you expect from Ireland anyway. But uh, yeah, the weather isn't playing a game. It's not heavy rain, but it's just annoying rain at the moment. But uh, yeah, I'll give you a, a taste of what it's like on these roads. The sort of uh, switchbacks and hidden dips and I had Titan and no real warning of corners coming and that sort of thing. So yeah. yeah, you need your wits about you. And every now and then as a young guy in his in his rally focus or something and he's flying along mainly though tractors and then get out in front of this tractor further towards the coast but for the moment I'm heading out this way we've got another 10 miles of this or something like that well we've dropped down onto the Causeway coastal route road again right against the coast which is where we started basically two days ago yeah the weather hasn't been as kind to us today and there's a lot of rain forecast about to come over so we're heading back to the hotel now and it's it's yeah it's five o'clock anyway so I think yes it would be an idea just to run through some of the likes on this trip what I've discovered about Ireland a little bit on the car and that sort of thing yeah kicking off with the rows in Northern Ireland and coming across well one it was great to discover a new area really never been to Ireland in my life finally cracked that one and uh, yeah it's quite a condensed sort of country what it offers you come out of Belfast and then you're straight on this coastal route and it puts you really in touch with the Atlantic because it's just there. Unfortunately, there's a war typically just here. But yeah, you feel very connected to the sea. And yeah, we made our way along. It's not the most amazing road. It's not a route Napoleon sort of road, but it is scenic. I quite like that sort of inland bit, that uh, bit of moor we went across. I wasn't expecting that. And then we dropped down Giant Causeway. Now, that was another one I always wanted the tick. Finally done the Giant Causeway. Yes, it's very touristy, but if you're into it, it is pretty special. It is a bit peculiar. These piles coming out of the ground and the hexagonal look and well worth the walk down. So I'm very pleased I ticked that box. I think where it really came alive for me uh, this trip is when we took that little ferry across and went up to Maiden Head yesterday and saw that view and that vista. That reminded me when I've been on the uh, the Isles or the Shetland Isles, it had that sort of feel about it, the remoteness, um, sort of a real farming community. 
So that was positive, and the roads narrower up there than I thought, um, but open quite quick. And all the roads, there always seems to be a place you can overtake, and that's always a good thing. So the occasional sort of um, caravan you come across where well, you can nip past. I, Port Russian up there was um, a different area. I knew about the Northwest 2000, but the roads weren't sort of epic. It's a very popular sort of holiday destination, so it's not somewhere you know you want to drive, even though the Northwest 200 takes place there. And I bet it's spectacular being right to the near the sea and all those houses around it. It's the you know the alternative to going to the TT every year. Then dropping down to Denegal and today and those roads over in Southern Ireland or uh, Donegal. I mean, they're super challenging roads. How we've still got an exhaust, I don't know, but we have. Um, I like the challenge of the roads, but it's a part of a dislike as well because you have to be very careful. If you're on those R roads in Public Ireland, then take care if you're in, in anything that's sort of low and got bits of carbon fibre bit low to the ground because you will snag them and take off exhaust very easily on those roads. They, they just come out of nowhere, these lumps and bumps and you're grounding out. But then it was seen it, I really enjoyed coming back into Northern Ireland province and then we did that B47 over those um, the so-called mountains, Stalin mountains was it, in the centre of Northern Ireland. What I liked about that, it went on forever and it never gave up. A Lotus Elise or something like that might have been a better car than this Jaguar on there, but it didn't really. Yeah, it gave its best and it was pretty good. So I think all, I, probably my favourite road was that B47 coming over the top. Favourite favorite scenic route, well, that was this morning, just seeing that Atlantic piling into the very west of Ireland. It was great to see. What else? This car, well, it's been a very comfortable car to do miles in really no problem at all. I think I have done yeah, 860 miles already. We've got another 300 to go to get home, so well over a thousand miles this trip. Big shame about the uh, wipers, uh, but Rain-X is extraordinary stuff and I keep replenishing it and it does an amazing job, so long as you can keep your speed up. Uh, engine, fantastic just love the way I'm in fifth gear now I can accelerate and yeah it really piles on the speed it's the combination of torque and horsepower so the overtakes were very easy to do as well so I've loved that about it MPG um, yeah 18.7 on the way up here since we got here squirting around no thoughts of economy I'm at 17.4 two two or three tanks we've done they're all in that ballpark which I think is pretty good so yeah, in summary, yeah, Northern Ireland and this top edge of Ireland offers quite a condensed sort of roadmap to have a go at. It is not a place to bring your Ferrari 296. It is a good place to bring a classic or something that's sort of rally-esque that can cope with all those undulations. It's challenging because you have to expect rain, I suppose, up here. It's an alternative to Scotland and you don't get the really quick roads that perhaps you get in Scotland but they're licensed losers anyway. Oh, another thing on that. Never saw a speed camera, no police, nothing up here. And the standard of the driving has been pretty good. And like, as I say, I just like the way there are straights like this and you can just nip past things. But you're not really ever going crazy quick because the roads are always darting all around the landscape. So there you go, that's the summary of our road trip to Northern Ireland in the Janker XJ Coupe V12 manual. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. There'll be more videos coming along very soon.